Birdman for Birdman on the Mountain. Time for your community shout. Hanging out here at the Birdman Media Studios on White Mountain Independent TV and also Sholo TV. Hi to all the viewers out there. Hey, we're going to start off this morning uh, with a little uh, fire safety with Mr. Kirk Webb. How Good are you, morning. sir? Hey, I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing well. Nice. So uh, I noticed on the sign down here near uh, Lakeside, yeah. it said, time to get ready for fire season. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have much of a winter. No. Um, so it's, you know, and I, I think people are very concerned and... So the little bit of moisture we're having, it's it's definitely helpful, but not near sufficient for what we typically see or what we need. Right. Um, it, you know, in fact, even looking at the National uh, Weather Service at their drought conditions, uh, indicators and things like that. Um, it, but it's interesting, you know, I just looked at a map just the other day and one of the maps, it, it kind of shows an area right in our White Mountains where it's actually recently been getting a little bit of moisture so we're we weren't in completely in the red um and i think maybe that has a lot to do with uh, the faith of the people in the and praying for snow and rain and crazy yeah whatever you want to attribute it to it works uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> keep it coming good uh, <laughs> but uh i know as a department we're actually looking at uh getting ready to start and going out doing our red tag green tag where we actually send the crews out and they do a brief assessment of people's properties and if if there's a home there they'll typically leave a a door hanger uh, with some ideas on there of things that they can do around their home to be able to um help them save their homes because i mean what's the most important thing other than our people and ourselves the next important thing is our our structures our homes right so, and we want to do everything we can to protect that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's talk through that a little bit. Uh, some of the things that uh, you should be thinking about to get yourself to be a green tag and not a red tag. <laughs> um, what are those things? Well, you, you know, one of the things we want to look at is the density of the trees. You know, do you have way too many trees on your property that now the fire can travel from treetop to treetop and, 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 and those types of fires can be quite devastating. They move very quickly too. So you want to have some open spacing. You want to be able to look above and, and see blue skies. Um, it, you know, if you look up and all you see is, is trees and tree branches, uh, that's probably not a great thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and the other thing too with that is, you know, we're actually trying to get a healthy forest. So in a healthy forest, if they're all fighting for the same kind of water, same kind of sunshine, you're going to have trees that are, they, they don't do well. They stay really tiny. Uh, they don't ever really mature. Uh, and, and they're, and, and the understory, you don't get the grasses and the, and the wildflowers growing that you normally see out in the large open fields and things like that. So you want to the, the pop, you know, how much trees you have on your property is, is important. So thin that out and that helps those other trees be more healthy because now they have better water source and resources to be able to keep them healthy. And, and then they can withstand some of this drought type things when we enter. Um, other things we look at, uh, underneath the decks and porches, <laughs> either it's cleared out. And, and then I even recommend to people that seal off those spaces, especially if they're a small space and you don't typically get under there and clean it well the embers from a fire mile two miles away can travel and and the wind that's where it takes them is right underneath so if you haven't cleaned that area underneath the deck or the porch and now you've got this kindling dry grasses leaves trash whatever the case well now you got a great fire starter and the ember comes in there gets the kindling on fire catches the deck on fire and there goes the house uh simple things like that um the rain gutters keeping yeah, yeah. the rain gutters clean so a lot of these things that are huge, you know, make a huge impact on on being able to save your home are pretty simple things to do. So so pretty straightforward. Uh, clean up around your yard. I mean, it's stuff that make you look your yard and your house look good, anyways. Right. right. And uh, just make sure that you're ready. So if something were to happen, um, now the next step is, you know, once you get that all cleaned up and you've come out, you've sort of given the green tag. There's a Ready, Set, Go program. There is. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Ready, Set, Go is is kind of a, a presentation that's been created several years ago, and, and that's what we use going to groups, homeowners associations, civic groups, church groups. I, you know, I'll, anybody that wants to listen to 
to me. Yeah. Um, and typically, if it's a large group, we'll try to get the Forest Service, the law enforcement, because the whole program talks about, one, ready is getting ready beforehand, doing the cleanup part. Right. Um, the set is, now let's say, like, remember a couple of years ago, we had the Cedar Fire, and we got put into pre-evacuation. Right. Um, set lets you know that, okay, if we are to, what things do I need to prepare to get ready to in case we get an evacuation order? Um, and, and this kind of thing's looking at, you know, your 72 hour kits, what we kind of like to call them, um, st- stuff that you need to be able to survive for three or four days. Right. Um, if there's a, if we're being threatened by a wildfire, are there things in your home that cannot be replaced? Um, very few, you know, and, and such things like your prescriptions. That's an important thing. Prescriptions, um, uh, medications, also important documents that that can't be replaced or replicated. Uh, is, it, that's a good thing to be able to maybe put that into a box to be able to take with you quickly. Um, make sure you have food and water, uh, you know, snack bars, things like that. Something, not, not all big, huge, bulky, heavy things because... It may come down to the point where you've got five minutes. Can you grab everything in five minutes, put it in your car, and get out? Right. Um, something that people a lot of time tend to forget about, did you put gas in the car? It would be a real big bummer to be heading down the road, and all of a sudden you need gas, and then you go to the gas station, and they're out of gas because everybody else is filled up, and you didn't. Right. Um, and, you know, so simple things like that think about um and i i did notice the other day on azein.com i think it was uh-huh. there's a, a a good little video that that goes through some of that stuff along with those same lines um i'll have to get you that link yeah you can maybe post we'll put on that your, link down below and you can take a look at that yeah and but there's there's some good information out there ready set go um and get with any one of the fire districts up here. Uh, we're, we'd be happy to come out and, and, you know, and even if you want us to come walk your property and, and give you some suggestions on what to do to make your property safer. Right. Uh, that's that's what we're here for. Very good. Awesome. I also want to remind everybody, you always want to make sure you're getting your information from an official source whenever any of these things happen. You'll note that whenever anything's posted up on Birdman Media, it cites who the source is. And you want those sources to be the police department, the fire districts, all of those kind of things. You don't want to just get some post that's random that says, hey, I heard that. Or they're handing out evacuation notices up in, you know, the Pine Top Police are doing this. Well, unless it's coming from the official source and it's, you know, any news, credible news source will cite the source, then it's not real information. So make sure that you don't uh, respond to things like that. We had a couple years back, you know, uh, people were like, oh, well, yeah, they're putting out a, uh, a uh, evacuation notice hanging them door hangers. And it, that wasn't what it was. What it was was, here's what to do if we're evacuated. Right. So don't react to those things in a way that uh, is going to cause more harm or get people excited. Um, just stick to official sources. I will always have here on Birdman Media always official sources. So that's the easiest right. way. And, and one of the big used um, information centers that we use is the 311 info. Um, so you can dial 311 from your phone, any phone, cell phone, uh, and be able to get that. And it's typically a recorded information line. Uh, or you can go online, 311info.net, and that gets you to the website where we try to keep, the, so anytime that there's something going on, that's our outlet for official um, information. Uh, I know it may not be as quick as you want, but when it comes across there, it is accurate. Very good. Uh, and and that's, that's actually between both Apache and Navajo counties. It's, it's a joint effort with all of us, and so that's what we use. Very cool. So anything else that we need to know about this time of you year? You know, um, it's, we're having some decent weather, so right now is a good time to look at cleaning around your home and, uh, you know, take advantage of it. Uh, who knows what uh, may bring this summer. Hopefully nothing devastating, but Very good. if we wait till the last minute then it's harder. It doesn't work very well. Cool. So once again, it's uh, Kirk Webb with the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District. Yes. 
Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Appreciate Thank you. It. Appreciate it. Cool. So, okay, hang out. I've got uh, going to have a telephone interview with a gentleman. Uh, he's English and uh, from Bul he's in Bulgaria right now. Uh, actually, has a film that's going to be introduced up here on uh, the 16th, so March 16th. Uh, the movie is called, and let me pull up my notes again because I had to remember it, Neither Wolf Nor Dog. The gentleman's name is Stephen Lewis Simpson, so hang on and uh, let me get him on the line. Okay, so it's Birdman, and as promised, here's the uh, interview. This is uh, Mr. Steve Simpson, and you're calling uh, from England, is that correct? Actually, Bulgaria. Oh, Bulgaria, further, so England further number. Further afield, yeah. Wow, but okay. I, but I'm British, yeah. But you are British, okay. So uh, yeah. Bulgaria and a uh, big time difference between us. Thank you for calling in. Really appreciate this. Um, give me a little background on uh, the movie and uh, what people can expect uh, sort of from your perspective. Well, it's a movie adaptation of a very popular Native American novel called Neither Wolf Nor Dog, um, written by an author, Kent Nurburn. And essentially, it's a sort of fictionalized story based on some of his own experiences. And it follows this author's journey being sucked into this road trip through the heart of Lakota country by a Lakota elder and his best buddy. And um, the elder was paid by Dave Bald Eagle, who was 95 years old at the time of filming. Wow. Um, and, and what was it like uh, for you for the, the filming? I mean, it, was it a story that you knew about that you wanted to adapt to a movie or uh, did somebody bring it to you? The author brought it to me. He'd had um, Hollywood producers for about 17 years circling the project and approaching him with, you know, grand eye uh, promises over what they were going to do uh, with the film and, you know, big Hollywood budgets and that sort of thing. But nobody crossed the line with it. And had enough with these sort of empty and he stumbled upon me um and a film that i'd made also on pine ridge indian reservation and handed me the novel and um about a year and a half later i finally committed to doing it and basically said i get it made by any means necessary and that was seven years ago so it's been quite a journey now tell me a little bit about uh, working with uh, dave bald eagle well he was an extraordinary man um it's it's you know, after he passed away at 97, NPR um, did a great piece on him. And then they debated afterwards on another show whether he was the world's most interesting man was their headline because he'd had this most unbelievable life. And that was just in his pores, all these experiences. And, you know, he was just a very uh, loving man, lovely to be with, uh, great sense of humor. And... Um, but his, his face embodied all of that, and, and photographing him was incredible. And, and the performance that he gives, I defy anyone to think of any other time they've seen a character quite like this on screen. It, it, he, he really put his soul on screen. So now, you, you, of course, you create the film, and you put it out there, and, uh, you know, like most independent films, you don't expect it to be able to go up against uh, the big, huge Hollywood uh, blockbuster movies, but you've actually had quite a bit of success with it, haven't you? Yeah, it's proven to be quite a sort of phenomenon. Um, you know, indie films typically just pop up in the big cities, and that's it, and I went and did a sort of opposite strategy. I've completely forgotten, you know, the New Yorks and LA's and whatever, um, because I know that you have to, apart from anything else, pay so much to get your attention there. But I knew the audience for this film was elsewhere. And, you know, in, in a number of states we've been in, we've been in a phenomenal number of screens, more than even some Oscar nominated independent films. When you add up what we've done in, say, Oregon, Washington, Montana, the Dakotas, things like that. And, you know, I think this is our 11th theater in Arizona, for example, so far. And it's been because the film appeals to people in these regions. And it's something that, you know, they relate to. It's, the film deals a lot with living on the land and around the land and that relationship as well. And, um, and so it's been very successful, I think, because also Hollywood movies are, are forgetting about emotional journeys for the audience the way that some great Hollywood movies used to have you know it's a film where people are laughing and crying through and feeling you know like they've gone through a real emotional journey through the film and and that's really wonderful um you know to to, to see people leaving with 
was such a complete experience. That's just just phenomenal. Um, so the movie is, of course, neither wolf nor dog. Uh, it's going to be showing at the uh, at the White Mountain uh, theaters up here on the 16th. I, I think it's just in the uh, the lakeside, but uh, I can double check on that, or you can call the theater directly. And of course, we've got the link as well. But uh, on the 16th, it's scheduled for a week, and and as you said, depending upon uh, how many get sold or how many people want to see it, it could get held over. Is that correct? It's true. I mean, it, it, it all depends on a lot of the times these little, you know, these these theaters with a few screens, I mean, they get forced into sort of, you know, certain commitments from the big distributors with the big films. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing when the owners of these theaters give space for, for a little independent like this, because, you know, they have to nudge us in between all the, you know, the you know, the juggernaut films, but, you know, and there have been times when we've been the number one film in multiplexes, you know, showing the likes of Thor and things like that. And, <laughs> you know, so it's been a real sort of, you know, David versus Goliath sort of situation. So, but that's, but still you're doing rather well. Um, as I've seen yeah. here, you have 42 different theaters you've been in so far um, and uh, continuing to go. It's well, uh, the, the the forty two were actually just between Oregon and Washington. Oh, just Oregon and Washington. At, yeah, we're now at about one hundred and thirty five. Wow. Um, so far, which yeah, I mean, it's bigger than films that the last two films that won the Cannes Film Festival, for example. Um, and I've been doing it myself as a filmmaker, taking it around theaters myself. So there hasn't been a, a self distributed film like this in quite some time, and also it's the most successful non-Hollywood Native American film in theaters for, for quite a number of years. So that's, you know, very pleased about that. Yeah, kudos to you. Um, one question then, after it's done going through theaters, will it be available uh, digitally or that people that maybe aren't near a theater such as ours are able to watch it? Yes, it, it, it will. But, you know, we part of the success of what, the way we've been working it is that we've been working slowly through theaters, so it's still going to be a while till it appears on DVD and in other forms. And again, corporations control most of those aspects of the business. Yeah. So, you know, for us, you know, it would be a, a phenomenal achievement for us to end up in a Walmart or whatever, because we'd have to be cir circumventing the traditional mechanisms. So, you know, we're thrilled that we've been you know, bucking the trend and, and getting into so many theaters. And, but the other thing is it's a film to be seen in theaters and, you know, it, the laughter. Yeah. It, else, it makes it that, that, that actual in, in merged experience in the, in the movie, so to speak. Um, so yes. once yeah. again, it's a uh, director and your director, producer, distributor, you're like doing it all, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This film's pretty much taken my sanity along with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Stephen Lewis Simpson, um, the film has a score on Rotten Tomatoes of 4.7 out of 5. Uh, I think anybody would be happy with that. Yes. yes. So, oh. and, and to be honest, I mean, I'd like to pat myself on the back about it from a filmmaking standpoint, but I don't think that's why the score is what it is. It is because Dave's performance captures people's hearts in such a powerful way I mean, that's really where the, what that score symbolizes. They, the people are going and having this remarkable experience connecting with his character, and all the other actors, you know, are you know embrace that as well. We all knew that we were working towards his great moment on screen rather than our own. Right, and when you have a ninety-five-year-old actor, you realize that that's ninety-five years of real experience that he brings uh, to that film. Yes. And, and here's a man who was left for dead on D-Day. I mean, he was part of the 82nd Airborne's infamous drop that day. And, wow. and, you know, so to him, every year since then was sort of, you know, added value. And, um, you know, we, we just can't sort of grasp, you know, everything that he went through in his life. And the film climaxes at Wounded Knee um, oh, and, no. you know, site of the infamous 1890 massacre. And I abandoned the script and the novel and had Dave improvise the entire sequence because his family background were closer to the events of 1890 than even the character he was playing. And at the end of filming that scene, he turned to Christopher Sweeney, who was playing opposite, and said, I've been holding that in for 95 years. Wow. Yeah, wow. and that power is in a close-up on screen, and that's what people are being able to experience in this film. Very good. So March 16th, it opens at the... Uh 
at the uh, WME Village Theater in Lakeside. It's just going to be at that one. So make sure you get your tickets. Go see this. It's certainly something you don't want to miss. Um, thank you, sir, for your time today from Bulgaria. It's Stephen Lewis Simpson. Any final thoughts you'd like to give out to anyone out there? Well, the only way that a film like this manages to breathe in this world is because of the word of mouth. And, and people have been amazing that way. We've got an amazing relationship through Facebook with the, with the audience. And, you know, I just, if anyone out there listening thinks, so oh, this, you know, my grandmother or somebody would love seeing this film, please spread the word because we're up against films that are spending tens of millions of dollars marketing themselves. And, you know, we're out there with the wonderful uh, support of broadcasters like yourselves passing this word on and you know we're bucking the trend of a sort of corporatized world with that and and you know getting something out there that's having meaning with people and, and a great entertaining experience as well phenomenal well thank you again for your time today hey that's going to be it for this week's community shout here at birdman media birdman on the mountain i want to remind you uh Check us out on YouTube as well. You can do subscribe there if you're staying away from Facebook. And I know how that can go. You can subscribe to YouTube, get updates, and uh, see the show there. You can see it on Sholo TV. And then also White Mountain Independence website and Facebook page. I'm Birdman reminding you, if I don't see you around town, I'll catch you right here on the web. <laughs>